Hoy continuamos con el tema de eh, secuencias series, ¿sí? Es el que estamos hablando. Sí, 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 sí. Okay. Hemos visto las eh, sumatorias de las, las, las sumatorias y las reglas de las sumatorias. Eh, convergencia y divergencia. Vimos diferentes tipos de series, cuando se suman, cuando se restan. ¿Qué es la convergencia y qué es la divergencia? También hemos hablado de asíntotas cuando vimos el límite. De hecho, tiene que ver con el examen que está por entero. Entonces, vamos a ver qué es la convergencia y qué es la divergencia en términos de las series. ¿Cuándo hay series convergentes? ¿O qué es una serie convergente? ¿Y qué sería una serie divergente? Vamos a ver. En este tutorial, we'll discuss when series are said to be convergent and divergent. Let's start by writing out your typical geometric series. It starts with a number, here we'll call it A, and each term in the series is equal to the previous term times the number R. So we have A plus AR plus AR squared plus AR cubed and so on, up to A times R to the N. First off, How many terms are there in this series? ¿Cuántos términos hay en esa serie? ¿Cuántos N. términos? No, N más uno. ¿N más uno? ¿Están de acuerdo los demás? Si ¿Sí está claro por qué sería esa la respuesta. Bueno, vamos a poner la respuesta. Nos dice que sí. ¿Pongo la explicación? Sí. Vamos a poner la explicación para reforzar. Let's start counting. This is the first term. This is the second term. This is the third term. This is the fourth term. We can keep going. The thing to notice is that the number of the term is always one more than the exponent of r. So if the exponent of r is n, that means the term is n plus 1. So the number of terms here is just n plus 1. Okay. Right. There are n plus one terms here. So if this were a longer series, then this sum would be partial sum number n plus one, or a n plus one. The first partial sum would be just a by itself. The second partial sum would be a plus a r, which are the first two terms. And a n plus one is the sum of the first n plus one terms. Now let's see if you can remember what the sum is for a geometric series. Given the numbers a and r, which of the following is a formula for this sum? ¿Cuál será la fórmula para la sumatoria de esta serie? A R por la suma. A, R, A por U el inverso de R, A por 1 menos R entre R, o A por 1 menos R a la N más 1 entre 1 menos R. La última. La última. Alguien me dijo que la tercera no era la última. Vamos a ver por qué. This formula was actually derived in another tutorial. Go back and check it out if you forgot. But a sub n plus 1 is equal to little a times 1 minus r to the n plus 1 over 1 minus r. It's that answer there. Eh, ya la habíamos visto antes. Entonces le dice los apuntes que fue lo que dijo. Ok, now let's see an example. Here's a geometric series: 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 and so on, up to 1024. These are powers of 2. Try finding the sum of this series. ¿Cuál será la sumatoria de esa serie? Por cierto, se parece a una tarea que quedó de la clase pasada. ¿Cuál es la suma de esa? A n más 1 se igual a A por 1 menos R a la n más 1 entre 1 menos R. ¿Cuál es A? ¿Cuál es N? ¿Y cuál es R?
Ah, era. No, estamos buscando. Estamos buscando este resultado de acá, que sería A sub n más 1. ¿Cuál es el. ¿Cuál es R? ¿Quién es R? ¿Quién es R? ¿Cuál es? ¿Y cuál es A? A es el primer término, el primer término es 1. Bien. A por R nos daría el segundo término. ¿Cuánto debe valer R? 2. Ahí vamos. ¿Cuánto vale N? ¿Cuánto valdría N? Fíjense, A por R es 2. A por R a la N es 24. Habría que despegar N. A por R que es 1 por 2. Para ahorrar tiempo, In order to use this formula here, we need three things. We need little a, little r, and little n. Little a is easy. It's the first term. This is little a. So let's just write that down. Little a is equal to 1. Little r is the ratio between terms. So we can pick two terms, say 4 and 8, and use them to find little r. We just take the bigger term, and divide it by the previous term, and we get r equals 2. The last thing we need is little n. Little n comes from the last term. The last term is 1024, so let's write that down. a times r to the n is equal to 1024. But we know a is 1 and r is 2, so the left side here is just 2 to the n equals 1024. And that means n is equal to the log base 2, 1024. That's 10. So now we know little n, little r, and little a. We should be able to find the 11th partial sum. Because little n is 10, we want big A sub 11. What's big A sub 11? Well, it's little a, which is 1. The numerator is 1 minus 2 to the 11, that's 10 plus 1. And the denominator is 1 minus 2. There's a minus sign in the numerator and denominator, so we can flip the order that the subtraction is done for both of them by multiplying the top and bottom by minus 1. And we're left with 2 to the 11 minus 1 on top is 2,047, and 1 on the denominator. That's just 1. So the answer for this partial sum, it's just 2047. Okay. O sea, como me decía, o como decía uno de mis profesores, de hecho era mi profesor de microbiología cuando me hiciera algún problema, el problema es muy sencillo, nada más es pura talacha. O sea, hay que trabajar. Esto sea 2047, ¿verdad? 2047. Exactly, 2047. For this geometric series, A, the first term in the series, is 1, and R, the ratio between the terms in the series, is 2. So for a series in which R equals 2, what happens to the partial sum AN as N gets really, really big? ¿Cuánto vale A it goes to infinito. Eh, okay. ¿Sí está entendido por qué? Sí. ¿Sí? Si hacemos, si le ponemos más, más números aquí y le vamos sumando, si ahora con estos, que son 10 términos, nos dio 2047, 
Y el siguiente término, precisamente este, sería el correspondiente, entonces, si hacemos n muy grande, sería a números muy, muy grandes. Um, right. The partial sums go off to infinity. Let's look at some of the partial sums for this series. A1 is 1. A2 is 1 plus 2, which is 3. A3 is 7. A4 is 15. A5 is 31. And if we skip ahead to A11, it's 2047. Each partial sum is more than twice the previous one, and they get infinitely big if you keep going. Let's look at a second example, one that behaves a little differently. Can you find the sum of this geometric series? Ahora, la suma de esa suma geométrica, de esa serie geométrica. Ahora es uno más un medio más un cuarto más un octavo más un décimo sexto. Dieciséisavo no me gusta cómo son. Digo décimo sexto. Un, un décimo vigésimo cuarto. Es más fácil que decir un 124 a eh, ¿Cuánto sería la suma de eso? ¿A cuánto vale? ¿R? Entonces, ¿cuánto vale N? ¿Cuánto da la... ¿Cuánto da A? A su índice. ¿Tiene ¿Sí? cuánto da? ¿Cuál es el resultado? ¿Ya lo tienen? Es más, creo que ya la habíamos hecho cuando empezamos a ver las... Las, las series. To evaluate the sum, we need to find little a, little r, and little n. Little a is the first term, which is 1. Little r is the ratio between terms, so we can take that term divided by that term, for example, to get 1 eighth divided by a fourth, which is a half. And to find little n, we need to look at the last term. The expression for the last term is a times r to the n, and in our example, that's 1 over 1,024. We know what little a and little r are, so if we plug those in, we get 1 times 1 half to the n equals 1 over 1,024. Another way to write the left side is 1 to the n, or 1, divided by 2 to the n. And the right side is 1 over 1024, which means that 2 to the n is equal to 1024. And if we take the log base 2 of both sides, we find that n is equal to 10. Now that we know little n, little r, little a, you can plug them into the formula to find the sum. R y N. ¿Cuánto? ¿Te sale punto nueve? A ver, alguien me dijo que... Ah, uno punto nueve. Uno punto... ¿Dices que te dio punto nueve? Cero punto nueve. 98, alguien dijo por ahí. 98 y tal. Pero 9, a ver. A ver, 1.9. 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9. No, solo 3. ¿Por qué 3? ¿Qué tacaños? Cierto, da 1.99. 999. Pero, 
Eh, de hecho, continúa ad infinitum. Yeah, so for this one, r is equal to a half. For geometric series in which r equals a half, like this one, what happens to the partial sum a n when n gets really, really big? ¿Qué pasa cuando n es muy, 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 muy lejano? Digo muy grande. Está ahí como un burro. Ya me te llegamos, ya me te llegamos. ¿Cuánto vale? Se acerca, se acerca a un número específico. A infinito como el otro, se acerca a cero, se acerca a un número específico o se detiene. Se acerca a dos. Se acerca a dos, que sería un número eh, específico. Entonces sería esta, efectivamente. Right. Rather than going off to infinity, this series approaches a specific number. Let's take a look. The first partial sum is 1. The second is 1.5. The third is 1.75. A4 is 1.875. A5 is 1.9375. And A11 is about 1.999. These partial sums are getting closer and closer to 2. And that's what it means to call a series convergent. It means that the partial sums are approaching a single finite value. We say it's finite because for a series to be convergent, it can't go off to infinity. And the series 1 plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth and so on is convergent since the partial sums approach 2. If you were to add up the infinitely many terms in this series, you would say that the sum of this infinite geometric series is exactly 2. Meanwhile, a divergent series is one whose partial sums don't approach a single value or whose partial sums go off to plus or minus infinity. And the geometric series with r equals 2 is an example of a divergent series. If you keep adding up larger and larger powers of 2, the partial sums go to infinity. Let's look at one last example, a series in which the nth term is equal to minus 1 to the nth power. Minus 1 to an odd power is still minus 1, while minus 1 to an even power equals positive 1. So this series is equal to minus 1, plus 1, minus 1, plus 1, minus 1, plus 1, and so on. Is this an example of a convergent or divergent series? Ya nos dijo que es una serie divergente. Ahora, ¿esa serie cómo es? ¿Convergente o divergente? Divergente. ¿Le ponemos por qué? Sí, al fin. Sí, 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 así. Ok. Let's take a look at the partial sums for this series. The first partial sum coming from this is just minus one. The second partial sum coming from the sum of the first two terms, is zero. Third one is minus one. And the fourth one is zero again. Now, it's tempting to say that the series doesn't diverge, it converges to something like zero or minus one. But the problem is, it doesn't actually get closer and closer to zero or closer and closer to minus one. There will always be terms that are far from zero, namely minus one, there will always be terms that are far from minus 1, namely 0. So this particular series doesn't converge. And whenever something doesn't converge, that means it diverges. It always has to do one or the other. Right. This one is divergent. To see why, let's look at the partial sums. A1 is minus 1. A2 is minus 1 plus 1, so that's 0. A3 is again minus 1. A4 is 0. And this switching off between minus 1 and 0 keeps going and continues forever if the series is infinite. While the partial sums don't go off to plus or minus infinity, they never converge to a single value. So this series is still divergent. In the next few tutorials, we'll look at different series and find ways to determine if they're convergent or divergent. Okay. Vamos a ver entonces lo que sigue. Que serían series geométricas infinitas. Ahorita estamos viendo qué sucede cuando los el número de términos son series muy, muy, muy grandes. 
serían entonces series infinitas y vimos algunas geométricas. Vamos a ver el Here we'll work out a formula for finding the sum of infinite geometric series. Series can be convergent or divergent. Here's an example of a divergent geometric series. If you add up all the terms, it goes to positive infinity. And here's an example of a convergent geometric series. If you add up all the terms here, the sum of this series approaches 2. Let's work out a formula for finding the sums of convergent geometric series that have infinitely many terms. Here's our typical geometric series. It starts with A, and each term in the series is equal to the previous term times the number R. So we have A plus AR plus AR squared, and so on, up to A times R to the N minus 1. There are a total of N terms here, so if we extended this series infinitely, we would call this the nth partial sum, or AN. Which of the following is an expression for the partial sum, AN, in terms of little a, R, and N? ¿Cuál sería el equivalente para escribir la enésima suma parcial, si no toda, toda suma, una parte, de, eh, en términos de A en el N? ¿Cuál es la fórmula o la forma de escribirlo? La segunda o la cuarta. ¿La segunda o la cuarta no te acuerdas? Vamos a ver si la segunda. Si no la segunda, debe ser la cuarta. ¿Cuál? This formula was derived in another tutorial. It's the first term, little a, times 1 minus r to the n in the numerator, divided by 1 minus r in the denominator. The thing to remember with this formula is that the power of r in the numerator here is always one bigger than the power of r in the last term here. So if this was n instead of n minus 1, this would have been n plus 1 instead of n. Okay, now suppose we want to find the sum of an infinite geometric series. Which of the following is a formula for the sum of an infinite geometric series? Cuando n tiene infinito, el límite de a sub n por r. Cuando n tiene infinito, el límite de a sub n cuando n tiene infinito. O el límite de a cuadrada sub n cuando n tiene infinito. ¿Cuál les gusta? La última. La última. La tercera. La tercera. Si tuviéramos 10, la base de 10, vamos a añadir los primeros 10 terms. A plus AR, plus everything up to A times R to the ninth. But that's not quite an infinite series. A sub 100 is a little closer, because we're adding up A plus AR, plus AR to the ninth, but then we keep going up to AR to the 99th. If we had A sub 1,000, it would be even closer, because we have A plus AR, plus everything up to A times R to the 999. So we'd be adding up 1,000 terms. If we really want to get an infinite series, we need to take A sub N, and we want N to be really, really big, so we want the limit as N goes to infinity. That's that guy there. Right. A n is a partial sum that represents the sum of the first n terms in the series. So if we take the limit as n goes to infinity, then we'll be adding up all of the infinitely many terms in the infinite series. Now, under what conditions will an infinite geometric series converge? ¿En qué condiciones una serie infinita geométrica, o geométrica infinita, converge? ¿En qué caso? Cuando r que es la proporción o razón de cambio entre términos, eh, su valor absoluto es menor o igual a 1, cuando el valor absoluto de R, es decir, de la tasa de cambio, es menor que 1, 
o depende del coeficiente A si es que es menor o igual a 1 o si es que solamente cuando A es menor a 1 ¿en qué casos una serie geométrica infinita es convergente? cuando T es menor que 1 cuando T es menor que 1 porque no sé R o A R cuando el valor absoluto fíjense que está como valor absoluto el valor absoluto de R es menor que 1, dices. Correcto. ¿Por qué? Porque en la pasada era menos 1. An infinite geometric series converges whenever this limit is finite. Let's write the limit out here. The limit is n goes to infinity of little a times 1 minus r to the n, all divided by 1 minus r. The only place n appears in this limit is in this term here. So let's figure out when that's going to converge and diverge. If r is big, say r is bigger than 1, what's going to happen? Well, if we take big numbers and raise them to higher and higher powers, we're going to get bigger and bigger numbers. So the sequence is going to diverge. Now, actually, we only care about big numbers, including big negative numbers. If you take negative 4 and raise it to higher and higher powers, it's also going to diverge. So let's just put absolute values around this R to take both situations into account. What happens if we take a small number and raise it to higher and higher powers? Well, if we take a small number, like a half or 0.8, or anything less than 1, and raise it to a bigger and bigger power, we're going to get 0 eventually. So the sequence on the left is going to converge. Finally, what happens if r is equal to 1, or if the size of r is equal to 1? Now, there's two cases. If r is equal to 1, our sequence looks like a plus a plus a plus a, and that's going to diverge as long as a is at 0. If r equals minus 1, it's going to be a, and then minus 1 times a, which is minus a, and then r squared times a is going to be plus a again, and it's going to alternate between a and minus a. Now, the partial sums for that series switch between a and 0, but that still means they diverge. Again, as long as a is in 0. So the only time we're guaranteed to converge is when r is less than 1, or the size of r is less than 1. Great, now let's see how you got that. We said the sum of an infinite series is the limit of the nth partial sum, a n, as n goes to infinity. We said a n is equal to this expression here, a times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. So taking the limit as n goes to infinity of a n means we're taking the limit as n goes to infinity for this expression as well. And now if r is less than 1, then raising r to the nth power where n is a really, really big number, will kill this term. Try raising a number between 0 and 1 to higher and higher powers, and you'll see that it goes to 0. If r is bigger than 1, then r to the n gets bigger as you increase the power n, making this whole expression bigger and bigger, causing the series to diverge. So infinite geometric series converge when r is less than 1. Let's come up with an exact formula for what they converge to by simplifying this expression. Can you evaluate this limit? ¿Cuánto vale ese límite? El límite de 1 menos r a la n entre 1 entre eh, menos r, cuando n tiene finito, cuando el valor absoluto de r es menor que 1. a entre 1 menos r, a entre 1 menos r cuadrada, r cuadrada o infinito. ¿Cuánto? No, 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 porque si no es no, es no, es no, 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 es no, 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 If you have a small number r, say the absolute value of r is less than 1, what happens when we raise it to a very, very large power? 
say r to the n, as n goes to infinity, well, bigger and bigger powers of small numbers get closer and closer to zero. So this is going to approach zero. What are we left with for the limit then? Well, we have a times 1 minus 0 over 1 minus r, which we can write as a over 1 minus r. Right. In the limit of large n, we said that r to the n goes to 0 when r is less than 1. So when we take this limit, we can replace the r to the n with a 0. 1 minus 0 is still 1. And we're multiplying this fraction by a, so let's move the a over to the numerator. And that's it. The sum of an infinite geometric series is a over 1 minus r, where a is the first term in the series, and r is the ratio between neighboring terms in the series. This formula is worth memorizing. It's pretty short, and it comes into play almost every time you see a geometric series. But remember, it only works when r is less than 1. When r is greater than or equal to 1, the infinite geometric series will diverge. Try out this last example. What's the sum of the infinite geometric series 3 plus 3 fifths plus 3 twenty fifths plus 3 over 125, and so on? What is the resultado de esa serie ¿Cuánto vale A? ¿Cuánto vale R? R, ¿cuánto agarras hasta 125? Hasta eh, 3 entre 125. ¿Cuánto valdría R? Sí. ¿Cuál es el coeficiente R? Pues un quinto. Ajá. Un quinto. Entonces sería que 3 entre 1 menos un quinto. ¿Cuánto es? Ahí sí, eso. Serían quebrados de primaria. Y de medio seis. Vete corriendo a sacar un niño de la primera de la ¿no? Verifique si está bien tu resultado. ¿Te pasaste? Me pasé. Dijeron seis. No es. Cinco tampoco es. Si me dices lo que será, te pertenecerá. Piensa despacito para... No se trata de adivinar. Sí, 3.7. ¿Tres 3.7? Sí. 3.7. ¿75? Ah, 3.75. Ah. A veces los decimales son importantes. Como ahorita. ¿Sí? 10 centavos que no la pongan a la alforja del trolebús no los dejan subir. Ya me pasó. Bien. Ok. Eh, y vamos entonces ahora a la última parte de esta sesión que es series geométricas aritméticas o series aritméticas geométricas. ¿Qué carambas es eso? Pues ya veremos. En este Here's an example of an arithmetic geometric series. Why do you think we're calling this an arithmetic geometric series? ¿Cuál es el, de qué manera podemos definir esa serie aritmética geométrica? 
porque es una serie geométrica, aritmética geométrica. Le podemos poner ese nombre. A ver, tenemos proporciones o fracciones. Números racionales, un unamo, <ríe> eh, dos medios, tres cuartos, cuatro octavos, cinco y seis avos. Bien. Se están sumando el primer número racional con el segundo número racional, con el tercer número racional, con el enésimo número racional. Si, es, si podríamos llamarla una serie aritmética geométrica, o solamente aritmética, o solamente geométrica. La primera nos dice que los numeradores son una secuencia aritmética y los denominadores son una secuencia geométrica, por lo tanto habría una secuencia aritmética de números arriba, o sea, no como serie, sino simplemente como una fila de números. Y abajo tenemos una fila de números en una secuencia geométrica, es lo que está sugiriendo aquí. La segunda es, los numeradores son geométricos, son, son geométricos una secuencia geométrica, y los denominadores son una secuencia aritmética. Y la tercera o segunda opción es eh, tener una secuencia aritmética y una uh, suma parcial geométrica. ¿Cuál es? ¿Alguna de esas cumple? ¿La primera? Sí, la primera. Vamos a poner por no dejar. The numerators and the denominators here seem to have two different patterns. The numerators increase by one every time we go to the next term in the series. The denominators get multiplied by two every time we go to the next term in the series. So the numerators, if they're increasing by one, are arithmetic. The denominators, if they get multiplied by a constant number every time we go to the next term, are geometric. The numerators are an arithmetic sequence, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. The denominators, meanwhile, are a geometric sequence. Each denominator is twice the previous one. It turns out that this sum converges. If you add up just the five terms shown here, what's the sum? ¿Cuál será la suma de esa serie? Un, un entero más dos medios. Eh, más tres cuartos, más cuatro octavos, más cinco de seis avos. Ya tienen la fórmula que les tengo que recordar. No tienen tiempo que recordar, si les escribieron la pueden. Si la pueden recordar, pero porque está así. dijo 5 4 punto 50 y qué 56 cuánto 3 punto 56 no los dejo con la to evaluate this finite sum We can just rewrite it with a common denominator of 16. So we're left with 1 plus 2 over 2, which is also 1, plus 3 fourths, plus 4 eighths, which is a half, plus 5 sixteenths. The top is 32, plus 12 is 44, plus 8 is 52, plus 5 is 57. So it's 57 over 16. Mm. Es lo mismo. Es lo mismo? Sí. Ya que lo sigue. Ah. Bueno, lo que es que expresar en todas las Seguro? No está bien, pero es lo mismo. Eh, espérame. Eh, 57 entre 16. No, no es lo mismo. 
¿Quiere que le hagamos el redondeo? Yo por eso digo que no. Y es más, el otro día fui a pagar una tarjeta de crédito. Tuve que pagar 10 centavos. Si yo no pago 6 centavos, ay, nada más son 10 centavos. Eh, le dejo una deuda millonaria a mis nietos. Porque sobre esos 10 centavos se generan intereses. Entonces sería 3.5625, porque tú afirmas que es un asco. No, no es un asco. Se llama precisión. Now let's try to figure out exactly what the sum of the infinite series is equal to. To do that, we'll divide up these fractions. First, we'll keep 1 over 1 as 1 over 1. Next, we'll split up the two halves into two copies of one half. We can similarly split the three quarters into three copies of one quarter. Four eighths becomes four copies of one eighth, and five sixteenths can be split up into five copies of one sixteenth. We could keep splitting up all the terms of this series up here, but for now, let's just look at the terms we've already shown here. Now let's find the sum of each of the rows here. What's the sum of this first row? One plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth plus a sixteenth, and so on. It's a geometric series, right? Ok, eh, a ver, ¿cuál es la suma de esa serie infinita? ¿La suma de esa serie infinita a la 1? ¿La suma de esa serie infinita a la 2? La suma de esa serie ¿Cuánto sería? ¿Cuánto da? ¿Cuánto? Uno punto noventa y tres. 1.93 ¿qué más? ¿7.5? no a ver, vamos a ver the infinite series in this question is a geometric series the first term call it little a is just one And the ratio between terms, we can take the second term divided by the first term, for instance, is a half. Every term is a half as big as the previous term. What's the sum for an infinite geometric series? Well, it's the first term over 1 minus the ratio. In that case, it's 1 over 1 minus a half, which is 2. No, uno entre el punto 5 o el medio la 2 te acercaste pero en este caso exactly right the sum of this first row is 2 what's the sum of the second row? ah, la suma de la segunda fila ¿cuánto? Yes, the second row adds up to one. What about the third row? Seamos correctos. Right again. And the fourth row adds up to a fourth, and the fifth row, which is the geometric series 1 16th plus 1 over 32 plus 1 over 64 and so on, adds up to an eighth. And these geometric series keep going. If we had split up more terms from the arithmetic geometric series up here, we'd have more geometric series down here that we'd be adding up. So this arithmetic geometric series up here also turns out to be the sum of 2 plus 1 plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth and so on. And this is another geometric series. So what's the sum of this one? Well, 
fatto una cinque pezzi per la fondo. Dos más uno, tres más un medio, tres punto cinco. ¿Cuánto? Tres punto setenta y algo. Tres punto ochenta y siete cinco. No son tacaños. What kind of infinite series is this? Well, every term is a half as big as the previous term. So it's another geometric series where the first term is 2. The ratio between terms, say a2 over a1, the easiest way to find the ratio, is a half. That means the sum, the infinity of partial sum of this series, is the first term, 2, over 1 minus r, which is a half, or 2 over a half, which is 4. Y no se está redondeando. ¿sí? Está aplicando la regla general o la fórmula. Right. Sencilla. The sum of this series is 4. So that's the sum of this arithmetic geometric series. It converges to 4. Finally, here are some basic rules about arithmetic geometric series. Their numerators are arithmetic, while their denominators are geometric. And those denominators have to be increasing, like in the example up here. Arithmetic geometric series always converge. And you can find their sum by rewriting them as multiple geometric series, just like we did for this one. Ok, eh, vamos a ver la próxima clase las pruebas para verificar que efectivamente las series que estamos viendo sean convergentes o no. Y con eso terminamos por el día de...